Good afternoon, y'all. This is Ned, one half of the Philippine Dreams Dream Team. Michelle cannot make it today as she hasn't got home from work yet. It's like 7.30 in the morning. Um, I'll be getting some questions because you know you guys, we had some computer problems recently. And I'll be getting some questions on the website about computers and what kind of computers are appropriate for the Philippines. Um, the first thing you have to keep in mind at all times is the heat, the humidity, and the dust that's here in the Philippines. Um, Again, you'll hear, if you haven't been here before, you'll hear how hot and humid it is, but until you actually get here, you can't fully appreciate how chronically hot it is. Basically, we have two seasons. It's hot and dry, or it's hot and wet. Right now, it's hot and wet. It's cloudy, but the temperatures are down a little bit. Um, so we got the heat, the humidity. We also have a lot of dust. We have a lot of particulates floating around in the air. Um, basically, it's from diesel engines, and they have even though they have emission testing and all that stuff, you'll see a lot of trucks um, just belching out black smoke at all times. People also burn their trash here, and when they're burning the trash, the particulates go up in the atmosphere, they float around. So there's a lot of dust. Also, you know, with this tropical environment that we have, um, there's a lot of pollen being secreted, and there's all kinds of stuff going on. So you're going to notice yourself sweating and having to dust a lot. Um, how does that affect computing? Well, the biggest dangers and the biggest threats to computers are heat, uh, humidity, and dust. And we have those three things in abundance here. So that's something that you always have to keep in mind if you're thinking about visiting the Philippines or moving to the Philippines. If you are just visiting the Philippines, I highly recommend one of those little netbooks. Um, they're small, I think they're still using Atom processors, they're small, they're lightweight, they're easy to transport, they're good for web surfing, uh, going onto Facebook, doing all that stuff. Basic computing needs. Um, if you have a blog, you can update your blog from it, uh, Microsoft Office, all that stuff. Just simple basic computing needs. Um, if you're doing video editing or photo editing or gaming, they're not so great, but hey, you got to take the good with the bad. Um, <coughs> The first computer that we're going to, I'm going to show right here is our little Dell XPS. This is our backup computer. Um, it's a little bigger than a netbook, but it's still pretty lightweight. Um, it also has a bigger display. I actually had a netbook at one time, but I just found the screen to be too small. So I was able to pick this up on eBay. I think it was like $130 or something. Um, it has a dedicated graphics card, the 8400 NVIDIA graphics card which is in here, you can actually see the little fan that cools it. Um, when I first got this, I repasted the thermal paste that's on the graphics processor and the CPU. It was very simple to do, this is a very easy computer to work on, um, and I noticed my temperatures dropped around 10 degrees Celsius right away. Um, so if you have an older computer and you, ha and you can do basic, and you can follow YouTube, I, fo I just followed YouTube. I looked it up on YouTube, I saw somebody do it, I got all the, you know, the thermal paste and the uh, copper replacement pads, and I did it myself. And I have absolutely no hardware um, expertise at all, and it was really easy to do. The benefit over a netbook is, again, the bigger display, it's got a um, faster processor, it's a, dual, it's a du dual core processor. It's about five years old, but it's still pretty snappy. I also put, I had a little extra 128 uh, SSD hard drive and I put that in it and even though it's only running at say the one speed, it's significantly faster than just running a regular hard drive. So this is our trusty little backup computer um, and I've been trying, it's, the only downside is doing video editing is very difficult on these because it's just, you know, it's a five year old computer and it's very slow. If you're just visiting. I highly re recommend something like that or smaller, something easy to carry around, something that's not going to generate a lot of heat, and something that's easy to maintain, just cracking it open or just blowing out the, uh, all the vents and everything. The second computer we're going to look at is the computer that, that I brought here to do video editing and what, it's what I consider my main PC. I also like computer gaming and it's, it was, it's good for computer gaming. Um, the only downside, as you'll see, is it's pretty big. <laughs> this is an Asus Republic of Gamers G73JH. Um, it's got an i7 core processor. It's got a uh, 5870M ATI graphics card. Uh, I also had a 256 gigabyte SSD in here. Um, this was running at SATA 2 speeds, not SATA 3. 
and it's significantly faster than our backup computer. It's also got a huge screen. It's a really nice computer. I was lucky because I was able to get this for a bargain price on Craigslist. Um, even now, they still go for around six, seven hundred dollars um, if it's in good condition. The downside again is it's a closed system. Um, they try to. It's got a small form factor, even though it's a huge computer. So they try to stuff as much technology into small uh, form as they can. Things are very tight in here. If something goes wrong, it's, it's extremely hard to repair. As you can see, I don't know if you can see in the screen, but you can see these uh, wavy uh, lavender lines. That's my graphics card. The graphics card um, has been going out for the past year, and it finally just completely died about two weeks ago. Um, and when the graphics card goes, it affects even your VGA display on these, so it's a problem. Uh, I had a local technician, um, the wife of an expat, she's very good and she did the repasting on these because these are extremely hard to take apart. The uh, Republican Gamers are one of the hardest ones to disassemble. She did a fantastic job, she took photos, you know, cleaning up the GPU, replacing the paste and all that. But it's just too much heat, it's too much humidity and it's too much dust for the Philippines um, and it finally just died. I just ordered a replacement um, video card on eBay Hong Kong. It was $160, but instead of just this being, you know, like a seven pound, eight pound uh, paperweight, I might as well pay the money to get a, uh, a new card put in, and then I can sell this to compensate some for the new system that I bought. So if you're co if you're visiting to the Philippines, you know, just spending a month here, a couple of weeks, this is not practical. This thing is just too big. It's too heavy. Ugh. It generates too much heat. Um, it's better off to have a netbook. If you're coming to live in the Philippines and you have a system like this, I would recommend selling it. Um, you can actually get pretty decent uh, computer systems here. Um, I recommend a well-ventilated desktop system. I just the, the system that we just got, the desktop system that we just got, has an Antec case with provision for five case fans. Right now, I only have two case fans in it, one drawing cooler air up from the bottom and one venting out uh, the hotter air from the top. But it's a much more open system. It cools a lot better. Um, and I think we paid a total. I'll put all the specs and all the, you know, the breakdown of what components are on the computer. I think it cost like $741 US. I think it was around 34,000 pesos. Um, it's, it's a very powerful system. And the best thing is that the idle temperatures on the GPU are about 25 degrees Celsius. And the load temperatures are around 45 uh, degrees Celsius. Compared to the Asus, the laptop, my gaming laptop, the video editing laptop, that used to idle at around 65, 70 degrees Celsius, and it used to max out under load at about 99 to 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Again, that's the heat, that's the humidity, um, that's the environmental factors that contribute to it. Um, the one thing, if I could do everything, if I could go back in time, <laughs> if I could go back in time, oh my God, um, that I would do differently, is I would actually purchase a, I'd bring like a backup computer, like my little Dell, uh, with me initially. But I would bring, I would also get a pretty decent video card uh, for a desktop system and a processor. Because I paid about the same for an i5-4460 processor that in, in the United States I could have gotten an i7. Um, which is a much better multi-threading, hyper-threading and all that stuff for video editing. And also the money that I spent on the video card here um, for a basically what is like a 660 Ti, I could have gotten a 670 um, for the same price in the United States. So instead of just bringing my whole computer, my whole desktop system, I would have brought just the processor um, and the GPU, the graphics card. But the price of RAM, case prices, hard drive prices, DVD prices, all that stuff is basically the same in the United States. But the processor uh, prices and the graphics card prices are, I'd say, about 20% more here in the Philippines. So it's something to keep in mind. You don't have to bring, you don't have to put all your, you know, your, your desktop computer in the States into a Valley by on box and ship it, although you can. Just make sure it's got a lot, a very, very well ventilated case and also dust screens on your fans. Make sure you got um, on dust screens on that. In the next part of this video, we're going to look at the desktop system that Ace Logic here in Dumaguete put together for me 
I am very pleased with it. They did a very good job. The price was more than fair. The guy has a good reputation down there. And it also provides local service. They give you a one-year service guarantee on all the components, um, all the work that they did, and then some of the components like the processor, the GPU, and all that stuff have an additional two or uh, I think the GPU has a three-year warranty, uh, which is good. And it, again, when you purchase something here, it's easier to get it serviced here than bringing something from the U.S. or Europe or whatnot and trying to get it you know, serviced here because typically they want you to send it out somewhere. Um, so again, in the next part of this, what we're going to do right now, and we're going to just take a look at the desktop system that I just recently purchased, and I'm very pleased with it. This is Ned, and check out the next part.